Hi, welcome back. So we started with the JavaScript implementation in the last video, and we also set up the tables we need and the relations. So now it's time to work a little bit more on the back end. So first is I will create the route we set up at the end of the last video, and this will be a post route leading to slash like, and it will use a controller action even though we haven't created that yet. So we will have post controller here and then post like post, let's say. And then here as a name for this route, we will have like. And this name is important because in the dashboard view, we're already using this name here. So this should match the name you just created here in the routes file. So this is a like route. Now in the post controller, Let's create this new function, public function, post like post. This method here will take or will get a request object injected so that we, that we can access the parameters or the data passed with this Ajax request. And what I want to do here is I want to retrieve the post ID. So this is request post ID. If you remember, remember this from my JavaScript file, I'm setting this post ID here. And I'm also sending this is like data. So this will be the second thing I extract here. Just check if it is, is like if it, well, is a liking action we're doing he, here or if we're disliking something. Now there's one thing I want to do or where we have to be careful. What we're getting past here will be interpreted as a string. So this is not a Boolean. So what I will he do here is I will check if we get true, if what we get submitted is true as a string and then I will, well, set it to true, otherwise to false. So kind of convert it. Now, of course, as before, I can get rid of this and just save this check here. But this is important for the rest to work correctly, as you will then see. The next thing is I will have two different actions, whether I'm updating an entry in the database or if I'm adding a new one. Because what are the cases we could have? I already explained them a bit at the beginning of the last video. Now it's time to dive into that deeper. We have this table where we have post ID, user ID and the third column which saves if, if it is a like or dislike. On the dashboard we have the like and dislike button. Case one is I neither like nor dislike this post. Like in this case, both buttons will say like or dislike and the database nothing is saved because I haven't published my opinion regarding this post yet. Next option is I like this post, so I click on like. Now in the database a new row will be created in the, in, in, in the table, in the like table, where I saved that I, the authenticated user, like this post. So the like column will be set to one, to true for this row. So it's the second case. Now I do already like this post. So this text would something, say something like you like this post or so. Now I could click on this you like this post link to undo my, my liking of this post, but not to dislike it, which again is something different here as this is kind of a negative uh, expression or I'm really saying I really don't like it instead of saying well, I, I just don't care. So I click on like after I already liked this post, then I want to undo this liking. So this is the third case. And so now what we do is we have a row in the database table for this user and post and currently it's set to one. Now when I click on like again I will just delete this row 
because I don't want to turn it into a dislike, I will just get rid of it so that I'm back to case one, where I haven't expressed any opinion on this post yet. Okay, next possibility is, I already like this post, but now I decide, no, not only do I not care, so I'm not undoing the like, I will turn it into a dislike instead, because now I really don't like this post anymore. Therefore, I don't click on you like this post to undo the liking, but I directly click on dislike. So when doing this, I could delete the row and enter a new one with the last column set to zero instead of one. But why would I do it? The easier way is to just update the entry so that I change the one, the true in the like column to zero so that now it is a dislike. So that are the four cases I have and of course vice versa for disliking but that's basically the same. So this is what I will have to somehow cover in my database or in the background. It sounds maybe a bit more complicated than it is, but I will start by adding an update variable, which is set to false by default. This variable is only there for me to store that after checking if the user already likes this post and so on, and if he now wants to dislike it instead of undoing the liking, that I can store if what I need to do in the end is update, it, update this entry or save a new one. And I will keep track of that with this variable. Next thing is I will find this post we're talking of. So post and then I will use post. Now find is a shortcut here to find it. Post find the post ID extracted. And now we don't need first or get after that. Just semicolon is enough. This will automatically or already retrieve the post for us. And then I check if well, if I have found something, if I got the post, and I will then return null. So I will just exit. Yeah, it would be better to return some JSON with an error message, but here I will just, well, just leave that method and nothing happens. Because I did not find the post, so whatever happened, something wrong, something's wrong. Next thing is I will retrieve the user. This is easy, just off user again. Because, well, I'm always doing this from the view of the locked in user. Next thing is, I want to, well, check if I already like this post. So if there already is an entry regarding this post, I will just call it like. And what I do is, I take the currently locked in user. Now use the likes relation we set up to get all the likes this user had. And then I want to see if from the likes of this user or in all the likes this user did in the past, I can find one where the post ID of that like matches the post ID of the post I'm now trying to like or dislike. And here I get the first element. Uh, there should be only one returned, but here I have to specify, specify first to not get a query builder object, but a real collection or in this case, individual element. So now I will check if I did find something. If I did not find anything, that means I haven't taken any liking action on this post yet. I never liked or disliked it or at least maybe I undid it, but right now there is no entry saved regarding that user and that post. But if I do find something, so now is the case where I already have an entry regarding this user and post. If I do find something, I want to check if I'm currently liking or disliking it. So now I already got this is like variable. So I will call this one, um, let's say already like, there might be a better name, but just to make it clear that it is not the same like this, where we're just retrieving the data we're getting passed to this function. But here we're checking if we currently already like or dislike this post. 
So what I will do is I will take the like I retrieved and access the like property or column. Remember, this is the name we set up here. This column has the name like. I'm now accessing this column here to get if it's currently a like or a dislike. So if this returns true, we already like it. If it returns false, we already dislike it, so to say. I hope this is clear what we're doing here. Either way, I can set update to true now because we already got an entry and we're going to change it. The last question is how are we going to change it? If we're currently liking it and we again clicked on the like button in the dashboard, we want to undo this liking. If we're currently liking it and we clicked on dislike, we don't want to undo it, we don't want to delete that entry, but we want to change the like column to zero, to dislike now. So in this case, what I will do here is I will say if already like equals is like. So what we passed into this request. In this case, I know I already, for example, liked this post and I clicked on the like button again. So now I only want to undo it. I don't want to change it into a dislike. So in this case, I will just delete this like from the database and then I will return null. I will just exit because everything's done. I just want to delete it. I undid it. Otherwise, um, I will well continue basically here. So let's just write the else statement for the question if we did already find a like. Now you might wonder where is the else statement here if I'm disliking it. I'm writing this outside of this if block here because by returning null I'm exiting anyway if I'm finished if I just had to undo it and otherwise I can just continue after this if block because there will be some code which is now relevant in the else case of this if statement and the general else case or next steps when creating a new like but you will see this in a second and then it should be more clear maybe. So here I'm checking if I already do have a like entry for this post user. Now in the case I don't, I know that I will create a new like because I, will, I don't have one yet. That's all here. Make sure you add this use app like import here at the top to be able to actually use the like uh, here in this file. So otherwise this would result in an error. So now I'm creating a new like, but either way, if I'm creating a new like or using the already created one, and this is what I was just talking about, now we're continuing outside of this if statement because now we're on the same page again. I want to edit this like. So in all cases, I will set the like column now to whatever got passed into this route or into this method here. So is like which you were passing for the Ajax call. Then I also will set the user ID equal to user ID. So my currently locked in user here, I'm accessing his ID or her ID. And then I have post ID. And well, I already got this as a variable, right? I could of course also just access post ID because I retrieved the post anyway here. So now the like is configured either as a new like if we didn't already have it or we just changed it if we did already have an entry. But now it's important we either have to save it if it is a new one or update it if it already existed. Now here is where my update variable is important. Remember, I set it to true if we found a like entry, so if we already had one, otherwise it is false by default. So if we already had an entry, well, all we do is we update the newly configured like. Otherwise, I will 
save it to create a new row, a new entry. And then I will again return null again. It would be better to return some kind of message, but it's fine like this here. So now this is my Ajax request or how I handle it. And this should really work. Now let me reload this page and let me click like here. And then I will open up one second. We'll open up my database. Here it is. And in the likes table, you can see I got a user ID of one, which, well, I only got one user, but which is this one, and a post ID of two, which is the post with the body another post. It's correct, I clicked on this button. I also have a like state or value of one, which is true because I clicked on like. If I click on like again and reload, you can see the entry was deleted because I undid it. If I click on dislike and reload, you can see I got the same entry as before, but now with a value of zero for like because it's a dislike. If I click on dislike again, I'm undoing it, but now it's the interesting part. If I click on like, I get a new like entry. If I now click on dislike, this should not disappear, but instead only this here should change to zero. And that's exactly what happened. Also, maybe you recognize that the ID of this entry didn't change because we did not delete it and create a new one, we just updated it. That's exactly the behavior we wanted. Now, the last thing is to update the DOM once we're done with, well, this part here. And we will see this in the next video. Bye.